Last week, the Ontario Municipal Board put out a notice to stakeholders of the Broadview Development Plan for a hearing on April the 26th. We spoke to one stakeholder about his participation in the process. Okay, so we're speaking with uh, Chris Williams. Uh, he's a resident of the uh, area. And, and Chris, if you can just uh, talk about your participation in the, uh, in the neighborhood and as well how the residents are participating in terms of the uh, Broadview Development Plan. Yeah, sure. So it started about two years ago where we were called in to look at the uh, helping out with the Broadview Avenue plan as they uh, build out the avenues plan to, to look at uh, mid-level, mid-rise development to intensify the area. And, um, you know, many meetings are, that happen both with stakeholders and also the broader community, uh, sometimes here at uh, Estonian House and sometimes at other places in the neighborhood, you know, and, what we saw throughout the whole process was that uh, you know the community was engaged and understood that development needed to happen uh, you know for the greater good of Toronto and uh, no one really was against development per se and as long as it was uh, well planned uh, the city brought planners in professional planners to to help out with the process and uh, you know when we saw the plans that, that looked like mid-rise mid -rise development six stories you know width of the road is the height of the building and you know, essentially the same plan that there is being instituted on so many other avenues in Toronto. It, you know, it just it makes sense that uh, more people can live downtown where there's transit and, you know, the community is just intensified and there's more vitality in the in the community. So, you know, when we see these kinds of plans, it was uh, it was pretty interesting. And, you know, we've got one that uh, was proposed right behind my house on the other side of the fence. And, you know, the plans perfectly aligned with what exactly was within the plan. And, Essentially, there was a few questions about it, but, you know, we worked uh, and talked to the developers, no problems at all. And, you know, they're still in the in the, the planning phase, but uh, there's no opposition to this stuff. Um, you know, the oppositions that we've we've heard about is when somebody wants to go beyond the plan. And, uh, you know, essentially what we hear is that it's it's nobody in the community wants that. It's it's the developers that want that. And, the, you know, the developers don't live here. Right. They don't care. They just want to make a buck. So, you know, when you hear that kind of stuff, you really wonder, like, w why do we allow this to happen in the city? And uh, so, you know, this, the, the people that we've talked to uh, read up on these kinds of things. And, you know, you, you hear in the Toronto Star is just basically that the city's been fighting, you know, the OMB, you know, for this for years, right? Because it's a non-elected uh, body that basically allows developers generally to build, you know, whatever the developer wants against the wishes of the community and against what the city planners have put together and against the elected officials. So, um, you know, it's not really very good for Toronto when these kinds of things happen and, uh, you know, people get hurt. As a stakeholder here in the community and now obviously in the OMB process and in defense of the, the Broadview development plan that uh, the residents in the city have put together, um, there's a critical meeting, hap a pre-hearing meeting that's happening on the 26th. Um, as I understand, you are and, and, and some of your neighbors are, are participating in that. Uh, there's recently been a development in terms of uh, the change in the uh, development partnership uh, with regard to 958 Broadview, the Estonian House. Uh, I'm just wondering what you know about uh, the Estonian House and the Altera development and do you know about the changes that have been made? Yeah, it's, it's not entirely clear what's going on from an outside looking in. All I know is, you know, you look at the what's proposed in the OMB and the names are there and, uh, you know, names Estonian House, it names Altera, it names a couple other, uh, you know, property owners up and down the road who've, who've taken offense to, to being, you know, limited to what the planners, uh, you know, these are experienced planners that we've hired, you know, the city hires to do this. They take offense to, to being limited to what the, the community feels is the right kind of development. And the city believes is the right kind of development. And, you know, as I was saying earlier, is that the process at the OMB is not a community-friendly process. Uh, it, is, it is tailored to lawyers. It's tailored to, you know, experienced planners. Uh, the community voice is, is, is not welcome there. Uh, if you want to, uh, you know, be a participant or a player in that thing, you know, it, it's going to involve hiring lawyers, thousands of dollars for the community to represent itself. Uh, the city has to fight this at the OMB. That means they have to hire lawyers. Essentially, this is going to cost the city hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, all because the developer wants to uh, flout the rules. Right? That's our taxpayers' money, right? You know, we pay for the plan in the first place, and then we have to pay, pay to defend the plan against uh, a bunch of developers who just want to make cash. 
Um, I'm sure as one of the uh, stakeholders, the name stakeholders in the OMB uh, uh, process, uh, you receive the notice. And I, I think you just mentioned that uh, Estonian House and Altera will still on that notice as well. So th as you understand it today, as of, I think, as April the 6th that that notif notice went out by mail, uh, that's, you understand both of those parties still to be involved in the process. Well, that's what it looks like on the paper. I mean, from the outside in, it's hard to know what's going on in the, uh, in the boards and the, uh, of the, you know, the Estonian community. And, you know, that's really up for them to decide. Uh, at the end of the day, whether, uh, you know, it's going to be a developer, right? We know that. It, 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 you, the, the developer will decide, uh, you know, they'll get their license from the OMB and they will decide how big and how uh, monstrous this thing will be and they'll make the money and everyone else will have to pay lawyers and, and essentially will probably lose. You know, unless, unless the city does an outstanding job of defending the, uh, the, the property, because it is a heritage property, right? Um, it is a, a building that was built in 1891 as part of the complex with uh, the brickworks, which is on the other side. Uh, the bricklayers, uh, the brick brick workers, uh, you know, their kids went to this school, right? They also worked at uh, Todd Morton Mills, and you know, this is the historical. This is part of that historical complex um, that the the city is trying to save and, and rejuvenate. Uh, and there's no good reason why that rejuvenation can't happen in a developing way. Uh, you know, we've seen what's happened, uh, you know, with the Broadview Hotel down at uh, Queen and Broadview. I mean, everyone gave up on it. It was a strip club. And they said, you know, let's just tear it down. But it's, this, it's essentially a very similar building, also built, coincidentally, in the same year, 1891. And, uh, you know, look at it now. Uh, you, that's what happens when you've got a developer that uh, has a vision for what the city could be and should be. And... They work with the community and they work with the city and nobody is fighting them. They are developing amazing things. So I don't understand why the vision isn't there to redevelop this particular property in a way that respects the heritage, respects the community and respects Toronto and the planners and the taxpayers. Um, why do we have to serve the developers all the time? Uh, we've been here for 55 years as the Estonian house. Um, and there is a uh, there is a discussion going on now and a consideration uh, to move down to Madison Avenue. I I'm just wondering uh, what may you be looking forward to in in terms of uh, gaining a new neighbor and losing an old one. Well, I think that's the the it's a bit of a, a tragedy, right? Because you think of what what the loss looks like. Essentially, we would be in this neighborhood. We would be losing a uh, part of the patchwork of Toronto. I'd be moving out of the neighborhood. Um, we'd be losing the heritage building. Uh, we would be uh, gaining a tower that no one wants uh, and the developer moves on. They don't live here. They don't care, right? They'll develop a tower anywhere. But the real tragedy of the whole thing is really the effort that the community went into to building up that plan. You know, two years of meetings and efforts and stuff is basically being thrown out the window. Uh, this will set the precedent for all of Broadview, all the way down to the, to the subway station. So. You know, if they can build a 24-story tower here, uh, every other developer will want the same thing all the way down to Danforth. And, uh, well, that's, that's a shame. That's not, that's not what anybody uh, set out to do. And uh, so this is the battle right here, right? It's, this, is, this is where the hobby decided. Uh, Mr. Williams, thanks you very much for uh, taking the time today, yeah. and, and uh, we'll see you in the neighborhood. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I wish that, you know, during the two years of discussions that we, you know, had a chance to creatively look at what's possible in the area. I mean, uh, I've lived here for 25 years and I'm still discovering new things. Uh, even just uh, in the last year or so, I've spent a lot of time hiking in, in behind Estonian House. And, uh, you know, I've run into a herd of deer uh, in, back there. It, you know, it's one of the absolute best bird watching areas in Toronto. It's an environmentally sensitive zone and, you know, the city is planning out their whole ravine strategy as a big part of what Toronto's all about. So, you know, you're, in a way, you're sitting on a gold mine, not a real estate gold mine, but something of a cultural gold mine. And uh, if that gets destroyed, we all lose. For Estonian World Review, I'm Alan Mayusi.